Hey, what's up everybody? BDO44 coming at you with another video. Alright, so I'm um, just, I've been up for about two hours. It's all right, about 5 a.m. And uh, i just been cycling through music. You know how I do. My other alter ego is BDF, the playlist curator, the musical guy. And uh, I'm cycling through a lot of music. Um, a thought has crossed my mind about the trajectory of some of the artists that are coming out right now. I'm looking at some of the images that are out there. Same images, same, you know, formulas. But I'm viewing it through a different lens because of what we've just kind of had been going through over the last three weeks socially. It's just different. And I wonder... I'm not certain of this, but I wonder if other people kind of see it that way. It's almost like there's been a shift in my desire. Let me let that go by. For my desire to see certain things. Maybe it's because I'm getting older, right? Because I'm already 38 years old, so I'm obviously not who they're marketing to. But I just... Even, you know, to the side of that, you put my age aside because I'm kind of, you know, immature for my age as it pertains to the type of stuff I like anyway. I'm probably 28 in my head when it comes to the music I like and all of that. So to me, it just feels like there's been a shift. Like I don't, I look at all the colors and some of the, the images and then and the smiling and just the, the whole way it's being marketed. It almost looks like a parody of itself. And I'm not bringing any names up because I just think that that's unfair. You know, they got artists out here who are working really hard. But it just looks like the machine. The machine itself is glaring to me. I'm not looking at the images. I'm looking at what I think is behind the images at this point. And I'm just wondering if other people are having that shift. I'm listening to the music. I mean, some of the songs that I used to listen to are talking about shoot him, shoot him, kill him, kill him, op, op. It just doesn't feel, I'm not confused about what I'm listening to, I guess is what I'm saying to you. I'm not confused by the fact that there are people investing into these images and into these, these ideals for the sole purpose of getting people who look like me to experience life in a certain way but and that's the best way I know how to describe it without sounding as if I understand some things that are not quite clear to me but what I can say is I've never been more intent on focusing on what I believe the intent is behind the investing in said music and art like I get it on its surface these are the things that people are listening to and want to hear a little deeper than that these are artists who are being pulled out of circumstances that often allow for them to put money into their families and change their lives and live their dreams and experience life in a way that they would only be able to if they were to reach the success that we're talking about well why do they have that success because individuals have picked them out as very, very, very shiny objects, so to speak, to attach certain ideals to so that they could push those ideals onto new generations of people who are going to have to siphon through that stuff to think freely. And while that's always been the truth and an understanding, it's never been on the tip of my tongue and on the forefront of my mind as I'm looking at things. Never. It's always something that you understand after the fact or will are willing to ignore because everybody else is ignoring it. It's one of those type of things where it's almost like you've been snapped from behind a spell, so to speak. It's like you wake up and you realize everything that you've been appreciating is BS. 
and a lot of the stuff that you enjoy are things that you were conditioned to appreciate. And that if you get, take away those agreements and you come to this place anew and you look at this stuff without those agreements and without all of it, you understand it to be something that is just flat out self-destructive in nature and probably put there to confuse, stir up, and otherwise keep under control. And it frustrates me thinking that I've had my mind hijacked by individuals who want to kill me. And I'd hate to sound so paranoid, but is it not that? Is it not that? You got people who are investing in the thoughts and images or, or the ideals of, of killing and pouring poison, liquor poison, drug poison into my into our bodies, going out there looking for conflicts for no reason other than the fact that we've separated ourselves or find ourselves separated by politics and, and interests. These things, yes, they exist, yes, but why are they being invested in as it pertains to the images and the thoughts of such? Why are these things being promoted to those who are not living the lifestyle? If for not to give those who are in that a position from which to promote, thus dream of being famous, for doing so, promoting the behavior of such and then reinforcing that behavior. They keep us spinning around, pun intended, in one space, thinking the same stuff, aiming for the same stuff to reach a height that would allow us to reinforce those same things to our brothers. If for some way we could reach the top of the mountain to be the best rapper, we can then be the voice from which reinforces this same dream to those who will come and reach for the same thing. Most will not get there. Most will die reinforcing the behavior. But few will reach the top to become the best so that they can say they poisoned the well with their, more, with their voices for the man behind the curtain. And see, that's just the, the notion that I have from here. It's so much more than that, you know? It's so much more than that. When you think about the intricacies of what happens when one raises money for certain things, and what happens when you get a, a certain type of people to behave a certain way and so spin around in one space, so to speak. You get the control. Okay, you got them over there. They killing each other, drinking liquor, cool siphon them over there i don't have to worry about them now what we got these people put these people over here okay we get them voting red cool all right siphon those people off okay we got them voting blue great got it like they're siphoning people off into positions from which you can be doing something so that they don't have to worry about you you're busy doing what it is that your culture does for us it just so happens to be killing each other and that makes a lot of money for them because they can pull force us in and out of the prison system and ultimately make a lot of money off of that too so there's a lot of different ways they can make money off of us you know what i mean as consumers as black people as anybody rich people poor people whatever you are they got something for you and that's what i come to understand you know they're, they're, they're siphoning off they're just pushing people in, in certain corners and so as I, as I look at this and I say, okay, what are they doing to our young girls? What are the images they're trying to put on our young girls? Well, obviously they want you to be a whore. Obviously they want you to slow as much skin as possible. Obviously they want you to be vain. They want you to, to idolize uh, images uh, and, and, and reach for it. Um, levels of beauty that you're not supposed to believe you can ever reach. You're supposed to pour money into yourself as it pertains to your body. If you don't do that, there's something wrong with you. You got to put all kinds of different things on you. Because obviously you strip down to your basis, basic self. 
will never be enough for this era. And yet, who is? Who is enough? You look at those who are at the top of the mountain, they're no happier than anyone else. You look at those who don't feel as if they're reaching that level and they're miserable. I mean, who is? And they keep you always reaching for something you can never get to. Feeling ever so insecure. But then they throw this different image in there. Now it's like, okay, to empower yourself is to slut it out. There's no reason to think that disrespecting yourself should be correlated with giving yourself away and exposing yourself to the world. And so they're trying to change your ideals, confuse you and all that. Keep you spinning around, confused about whether or not you should respect yourself for what it is they're teaching you how to do. Telling you you should respect yourself and you listen to the parents, they tell you that's not respecting yourself. You never quite figure out what actually is and you just get lost in a world where people worship each other for one, wanting the wrong things. This is just chaos, man. And they create this chaos by continuing to reinforce that this should be by way of these celebrities that they prop up, that they hand fake billions to. They ain't real billions. They give a fake billion to you over here for propping up some bull crap. They go up six fake billion for you. But if ever you get away from what it is that we want you to do, how much of that money do you actually keep? If for some reason you want to <clears throat> think for yourself or talk a way you want to talk or support something that they don't necessarily have aligned with the agenda, them little billions you got, they're gone. You know, it's funny because Forbes tells us who got what. But every time I listen to these people when they speak, they say, nah, those numbers are off. Why is it that they keep telling us these people are a certain amount of, have a certain amount of money? Why is it so important that I know this person became a billionaire on this day? On a day where they're crushing Kanye West and have snatched his fake billions back from here. And now they're telling me that they propped up... Diddy as a billionaire for the first time the day after Kanye didn't piss them off? Diddy's been scratching almost a billion dollars according to these people for what? Ten years? But he finally got it that day, right? I'm just looking at all of this and I'm like, this is bullcrap. These scales that they have us reaching for, that's not, that is not real math. Because what it adds up to is self-destruction and un and you wasting your time on earth reaching for things that are not actually there for you to reach. You're reaching for their approval. You're reaching the beat within their clutches. You're not reaching for success. That's not success. You're not free. The moment you become within that type of level of success, now you're caught within the webs of what it is that they allow you to have and do and what your responsibility is to keep me brainwashed and in a spell I mean it's too much to look at it at this point as success that's not success success is my my idea of success is probably either the people behind them or the people who take those people down <laughs> you understand what I'm saying the people behind the people who are investing in this nonsense they're very successful because they've cheated the game to the point where they have it all figured out so they're living free lives or the people who take them down <laughs> People who are able to expose them, who can liberate the rest of us, those people will find success. Anything in, other than that is just us living the way they want us to live for as long as they want us to live, it seems. In the ways that they want us to live, reinforcing the ideas that we want, they want us to have that confuse the hell out of us when we really break it down. And the thing is, the only thing I can come up with is... I'm sitting here with my black brain coming up with this five in the morning for no reason without any of the things that they say I need to be successful. I'm coming up with this just in my own head. Yes, they want to poison people that look like me so we run around and kill each other. Because if we're thinking like this at five in the morning and I'm not even the smartest of us, you got to think, just because we don't know who we are don't mean that those who are investing in our failure don't know who we are and what we're capable of. They just don't want us to know. They don't want us to ever reach our potential. 
So they will invest in our failure and they will make it look like it's our fault. Make it look like it was our want, our doing. But I look at these images and I just say, I've been seeing them my whole life. Literally. I have been taught how to kill myself and my brother since I came into this world by way of the culture. So what are my wants really? What do I really want if not for what they've told me I should want? What am I really after if not what they told me to reach for? You see what I'm saying? And the thing that comes to me is like, this doesn't have to be. As a person, as a, as a black person in this country, you start thinking, man, I got to get away from this place. No, you don't. No, you don't. We need to do the same thing they did in a different way. We need to plant the seeds in the minds of those around us of how to unleash our minds from this nonsense. And we need to change the culture around us so those who have so much power over us no longer have the leverage that they've had. You got to stop wanting what they want to give you. You got to start looking at this stuff as poison. There are things I've come to understand in this life and I've grown to this, be this age. And this speaks for myself and whoever this applies to. Because I honestly, there's no way of me really knowing if this wisdom applies to your life. But it does to mine. There are going to be certain things that for myself will be like a fly trap. It will be nice. It will smell good. It will look good to the taste. It will taste good. If I obtain it, it will feel good and it will feel good to my soul. But you know what it's for? It's meant to destroy me. And if ever I want to destroy myself, all I need to do is indulge myself in whatever that is. Now the key to understanding for myself is what those things are. To know that I will always want those things. And to know that I should never have those things. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's a discipline of the mind and the understanding that certain things are not meant for your help. They're not meant for your good. But you will want those things and everything in your body and your soul and your cells will tell you to go after that thing. And you know what those things inside of you will be? That same thing that wants to destroy everything that you ever try to accomplish, everyone that you ever want to help. Yeah, that thing. It's also attached to that indulgence. So what do you do? You acknowledge that you always want that thing and you stay the hell away from it. You make it very clear to yourself that that thing is the very essence of all of your failure. And it will always look good. It will always taste good. It will always be right there for you to touch. It will never be too far away. But never should you ever desire to touch it unless you want to be a complete failure and be destroyed in that same flurry. So what do you do around those things? You stay away from them. You look at them for what they are. To be never seen, touched, or messed with. It's just part of life. They're there. You understand what I'm saying? There it is. It's right there. And you discipline yourself to understand how poisonous it is. And you discipline yourself to understand exactly how far away from it you want to be at all times. You know what I'm saying? We need to start looking at life with certain things like that. Because it's just like I said in a different analogy in regards to LeBron James talking to the referees. There's always going to be that in inside feeling for him to want to talk to the referees and get them to understand that the call that they just called should not have been called or vice versa. But the discipline for him is to understand that that is a temptation to stay away from because what it does is hurt other aspects of the game that ultimately leads him to the failure that he's ultimately protesting against. And to discipline himself to understand that that temptation is always there. But to overcome it is to truly be best competitive. Because when you do the right things, you can actually lead yourself to the goal that you want to reach to. Reach to. It's, it's chess, as they say, not checkers. Sometimes you have to go the unconventional route. And to know that temptation is nothing but a fail. Just a fail switch for you. To hit. That will always, always feel great. Always look good, but will always mess up what it is that you're ultimately trying to do will never be worth it. That's the key to that thing. It will never be worth it. 
you know, so that's what I'm that's what I'm saying. Like if he would just overcome that, if I would just stay away from that thing, if you have that thing in your life and you realize it's a great desire for you, but that it exists to stay away from is just part of your experience in life. And as you stay successful staying away from that thing, you will manage. You will manage. But the moment you go toward that thing, it's over. And that is what we have to understand and discipline against. <laughs> and to know why over is bad for us. See, that's a hard one for a lot of people because they think over is a good thing. You get away from your problems. You cut out of certain things. You get a crutch. No, over means that you don't have a chance to fix certain things. Over means that the stuff that you cannot see that you care about is also being neglected. And there's a lot of stuff, to, a whole lot of stuff for me to try to open up the <laughs> what that could possibly be in your life is impossible. Even you do not know, but that you won't be around to help it or be a part of the solution is a problem. So that's why you don't want to quit on things. That's why you don't want to go toward that thing or those things. Many people have many of them. Addictive personalities. You got a hundred of those things that you need to stay away from. Life is just like that for you. You know what I mean? But we got to do what we got to do. This, this is our path. And what we cannot do is allow others to influence our path by not doing the due diligence that we know we should in viewing things properly. So as it pertains to certain agreements that we have, certain music, certain ideals, some things that come to us naturally, we just need to remember that a lot of things was poured into us by way of those that did not want to see us do well. You know, and it ain't just black folks. I hate to tell y'all this, but the overall environment is controlled. That you view black people a certain way if you do. And this attached to these agreements, you need to understand that you've been controlled no different than they. You're in the environment which they are running around, spinning around, killing each other. Do you not understand that? I think that part gets lost in people. It's like us versus them. No, you guys are in the same world we're in. See, the guise of being in certain groups help you think that your environment isn't being destroyed by certain situations. But I'm telling you, I live in Los Angeles. Beverly Hills is five minutes away from poverty. And that those in Beverly Hills don't see a problem with that is a controlled thought. No different than the spin around, kill yourself. No, they should be concerned that poverty is that close to next door, but they are not. That's why free thinking is so important, because it's like, do you not realize that none of this is normal? None of this is normal. These people are getting stuck up at Rodeo Drive, getting these chains snatched up off their necks, the jewels snatched up on them. They don't understand the correlation of how allowing this to go long for so long is why we're in this space. You allow people to be broke right next door to you for as long as you were, as long as people have been. Of course it's going to reach a powder keg. Of course people going to start snatching people up. What would keep them from doing so? But the agreements that have been forced into their minds by way of these entities that invest in controlling them. So that you stay over there shooting and spinning each other. You stay over here voting red. You stay over here voting blue. Because once you realize you're all stuck in one box together, you start wondering why you're not fixing each other's problems. You start realizing that the, the, the problem that you don't seem to care about is literally right next door to you. This is your environment. <laughs> and when you think about a rich person, like a really wealthy person, when they live far away from here, do you know how much space they inhabit with their property? I own 700,000 acres. Seven, do you realize like the close proximity of where we're at embodies their entire <laughs> their entire property so these different class systems and all of that could be slapped dead inside of the property that they own and all of us just running around thinking we're so much better or so much worse than others no buddy you're all in the same spot you're all in the same mousetrap 
through all mics, all of them. And what I've come to understand is whether you're reaching for the most money or don't have any or none of that, the idea that you're reaching up is controlled. Like, when you start really thinking about free thinking and what actual free thought is, they're telling me to aspire to be great. What does that mean? I got to get a lot of money. I got to become famous. What does famous mean? That means that my art, the art that I have, has to be put on a platter for everyone to see so that it's understood that I am successful. Because the more people who see it leads me to success. But I'm not judging success by what it is that others are saying. I'm judging it by the outcome. The outcome provides success. How I take in the life I'm receiving is actually determination of the success. Am I enjoying what's going on? Is it affecting the people that I care about in the way that I want it to? Am I doing enough? Whatever it may be. It has to do with how I'm taking it in. So for me, if I'm reaching for things that's going to lead to my end, how is that actual success? If I'm reaching for things that's going to lead me in a space to ultimately be hated by many, how is that actual success? If I can gain $8 billion and you can take it from me for saying the wrong thing, how is that actually success? If I get the girl I want and I get the cars and the money and all of that, but at the end of the day you end up smearing me and tearing me down in the end, what? level of success did I actually reach I think we measure success based on what other people have told us success is what based on what other people around us say success is and a lot of them are lying about how they're enjoying their success a lot of these people are struggling managing their success because it takes a lot to keep a lot not everybody should have a lot they're not wired to there needs to be other levels of success from which they need to want and they're not told to want it, and therefore they don't fathom it. You know, I prayed to God today, and I asked him, Lord, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? And, the, and what came to me said is, I have you where I want you. I have you where I want you. See, in my mind, I'm thinking I'm supposed to be doing this, 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 and this, because of the agreements around me say I need to be doing these things. I need to be out doing this. I need to earn that because I owe this. And this is what's going on because of that and this and this and that and that. But what I've come to realize is the only real truth is connected to the source because everything else is a question mark. I don't know what comes with anything. I walk outside and get hit by a car. I go outside, someone hands me a million dollars. I don't know what comes with nothing. All I know is the agreements that I have based on what I was told I should want and the connection I have with God, which doesn't have anything to do with anything but just my desire to be free of things that I just feel bound by naturally. And because of that quest to find freedom, I found that everybody around me doesn't even know that freedom doesn't exist. It does not exist. Everybody alive should be a finder of freedom because we're all a consumer. We are all controlled consumers. Wanting things they've told us to want, reaching for things that we don't even know if we can handle. Because people tell us it's success. It ain't success. I'm looking around and everybody's defining success as the numbers. How much did he sell in the first week? Common sense tells me that's short-sighted. It doesn't matter. It literally doesn't matter. A person can't even digest that much music in, in that soon. It can't be properly perceived as good music that soon. So why do I care about how many people went out to get something for the first time if I don't know if it's good or bad or not? They went out and got it based on the popularity of the person, not necessarily whether or not it's good. They can't even determine if it's good that fast. But I'm logically supposed to look at it as successful? That's not success. That's short-sighted. I can measure that on my own, but I've been taught not to want to. Do you see what I'm saying? That's not success. Success is making something quality so that people keep coming back and listening to it, so that they love it. <laughs> now, maybe you've accomplished both, and a lot of artists do. But that they say, oh, did he do well in the first week? I don't know. No, yeah, he did. Okay, no, that's success? No, that's not success. Because the second week, people realized it was garbage and never went back to it again. You see what I'm saying? I'm not allowing these people 
and their bad math to tell me what I should want. I got God for that. And the way it goes in my life is so long as I feel prayed up. And this is just goes for me. I can't speak for you. As long as I'm praying to God and he's telling me what to do within reason. And when I say within reason, it's because God doesn't live in my head. A good, a good loved one of mine thought God lived in her head and caused a lot of hurt that way. It doesn't work that way. It's your gut. It's what you know is right. Coupled with your prayer. Coupled with common sense. Coupled with all of those things. Because if you truly have the Lord, he ain't going to lead you the wrong way. He ain't going to think he lives. He ain't going to allow you to think that he lives in your head. So that you make decisions that hurt other people. And see, that's what I've come to understand as well. It's like, how, how can I be sure? How can I be sure? Because if you're truly connected to the, the creator, he's not going to allow you to screw up what it is that he's created. That's what I've come to understand in my, my travels through this life. It's like, if you're really connected to him, he ain't going to lead you into a situation to do any damage. He don't want you to do any damage. He's trying to control that, <laughs> seems to me, while everybody else is chaotically running toward whatever it is they feel they should based on the agreements around them that need to be sorted through. You know, he put me here to think this way and he put me in one spot because he wants me to be in this one spot thinking this way right now. And when he wants me to move on to a different spot, circumstances will make it so that I will move on no different than I always have. Now, this is what works in my life. But what I'm saying is you got to do what feels right to you. You got to organically be yourself. If I was supposed to be anything else, I would be that. I would feel that would feel natural to me. For the longest time, I was trying to live and, 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 and do things and be the way that I felt I should. And in going against that, naturally, I felt wrong. And it made me feel uncomfortable. It made me feel less, less. I was unhappy. And when I started doing things naturally, I was able to start taking care of myself, starting to get closer to God, starting to be more productive, starting to find my, ta my talent, starting to utilize my time in ways that felt right to me. That I had to go against what others were doing. I had to go against what they told me I should to find my true math. Not the math and algorithm and the rhythm that they told me to live, because that ain't my rhythm. I'm never, I'm not for that. And when you start to understand that, you can't fight that. And you certainly can't let the world around you make you feel like you're supposed to be aligned with their rhythm when you're actually an evolutionized version of what it is. You're supposed to be setting the tone, not going with what was. See, that's the beauty of understanding evolution. You respect it. The new kids are going to be even better versions of us because that's just what God's doing. He's improving. He's coming out with better versions of everything. And I don't think people realize that. That's what human evolution is. It's the, it's the evolution of God's creative juices, so to speak. He, I got a better version. Check this out. I got a better one. Here goes another one. You got a brawn for you? I got a wet banyama for you. Check this out. You see what I'm saying? Like, he's improving on his ability to create us. And so this is, these are the things that I've become privy to as I, as I pray. As I pray, I'm like, yo, all of this is, is becoming real to me. And then I look around at the stuff that I see and these agreements. And they show me black people. Who, ah, here goes an evil image here. Ah, here goes a black woman with a devil with horns on her head. Ah, here goes a black man with a gun in his hand. Oh, there goes another one. He just got his head popped. Let's figure out who, who murdered him. It's like, oh, there goes another one. He was a sexual deviant. Let's talk about it for two months. Ah, there goes another one. Let's fire him and smear him. Oh, there goes another one. He's showing himself to a white lady. Oh, there goes, like, it's just so much of it. And they can't wait to promote it over and 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 over again. Why? I know why. You see what I'm saying? You start to realize why they spend so much attention on us. For people that do not matter, things that do not matter circumstances that don't matter they will never put so much of an emphasis on you if they discard of you and they don't think much of you you get no attention so for the things that they say and they speak and they say don't matter or they put an emphasis on this doesn't matter this doesn't matter this doesn't matter you best believe it matters christ amc black people i'm seeing the parallel i'm seeing the parallel Three things they tell us doesn't matter, but they keep putting an emphasis on. Three unrelated things, three different scales of things, things, three things that have nothing to do with each other and yet do. 
yet do. And if you follow me, you understand the correlation very, very clearly. Anything that they shill holds value. That's the correlation. That is how all this comes together. If they shill it, it matters. What is a shill? A shill is someone who will come by and tell you something that you own holds no value. That's what a shill is. Usually used in the stock market. They'll tell you that that stock is worthless. When really, they are, they stand to gain a lot of money from you selling it. <laughs> they stand to gain a whole lot from you selling it. You probably save their backside in some cases if you sell. But they will make damn sure that you know that you're worthless, that you're an idiot, that you're such and such, all negative things, definitely disrespectful for holding it. Black people, slaves, three-fifths of a human, blah, blah, blah. First thing they want to do is exploit our extraordinary talent, absolutely extraordinary talents. Unique to anywhere else in the world, you cannot find people that can do this, 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 and this. They want to exploit the hell out of it. They pour all of their marketing money into that. And it doesn't matter. And we discard of it. We do not care to invest in their people. It's all their fault. Black Lives Matter on the, on the streets a little bit when things go wrong. You know, we just play with them, whatever. Black people, you see the images, you see what it is. They do not matter except for the fact that they do. Racists are obsessed with us. They focus more on black people than we focus on ourselves. I kid you not. Anytime you look on a racist, for racist forum or anywhere where you'll find individuals like that, the moment you step in there, it's some black culture they're either making fun of, talking about, speaking around of some sort. It's always centered at their racism, their entire culture. Their identity is based on their hatred for black. And hatred is something that you discard of, should you not. It doesn't matter. You hate it. It's, it, become, it, it ends in the, ends up in the lesser pile, right? If, if, if it's stuff that you hate and don't like, it's, it's over there, right? Obsessed would be a better way to describe it. Obsessed. Jesus Christ it doesn't exist, right? Not a real Jesus. All these different things they want to tell us. He's a white guy. Everything they can tell us to try to dis our belief in that from which is the image of a son of God they have thrown so many lies at Jesus' name to confuse and water down and make corny I think the evil the deepest evil of it all is how we received the Christ because there's so many reasons to question it if you're a black person it was embedded in your heart to love him without even actually knowing who he was when you find out that you received him by way of people who didn't mean you no well they hated you all of these different things should point at you saying you know what that's the wrong Christ and a lot of people do they really do they be like you know what all logic points at Christ being corny non-existence not necessary x out his name for the holiday put a old saint nick up there did all of this stuff to let you understand that that dude ain't that here's the thing though when i pray in his name good things happen for me when I pray all that stuff in Jesus' name, good stuff happens for me. Now, I'll be the first one to tell you. I've got some agreements to work through. Because I'm the one that doesn't like to listen to Christian music. I'm the one that doesn't watch the Christ go to the church. I'm the dude that kind of stays far away from Christian culture. I'm, the dude, I'm him. I'm the guy. When you say a yeah, black dude don't go to church, I haven't gone to church in a long time. You know what I'm saying? I'm the first one to tell you. I ain't even listen to Lecrae album because he's a Christian artist. I kid you not. Like, I'm the guy that stays away. I'm also the guy who found himself in the worst of circumstances, praying in Jesus' name because it's the only God I knew. 
and laying in things on his name and finding things work out for no reason after that. No reason. I'm the guy who said, Jesus, I don't know what else I'm going to do. I want to leave this earth. And things worked out. A million different times I've tried this. Systematically, so to speak, tried this. With the intent of believing that this is some bull crap. Because I had reached that point in my life a couple times. And it worked out. Each and every time. I'm saying it because it happened. I'm not saying this because I'm some Jesus preacher. I don't want you to give me no money. I don't have a collection plate. I'm not telling you to go to church. I'm not telling you to pick up a Bible. I'm not telling you anything other than what I tried when I was really doing bad and what really, really worked. And the only thing that worked was that. 